Hi, do you everyone? My name is Mr. Fruit, and welcome to the special sponsored special, by special, DC special. Universe, but not actually sponsored by DC Universe episode because Zack Snyder's Justice League director's cut is out. That is what we spend our majority of time talking about. The very beginning, we we just give a brief overview, like here's what we think, here's what we would rate it if we had to. Then we get into spoilers. So at that point, if you don't want to be spoiled, you can click away then. And then after that, we talked about little like headlines and stuff here and there. But the bulk of it is just definitely Justice League. And at the end, we have our Q and A's as always. So if any or all of that sounds interesting, or even if it doesn't, you're legally obligated to listen and watch this because I said so. So enjoy this episode and let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the GG Over Easy podcast, episode 78, 77, 67, 68, Wait, 77, 70, really, I think you're I right, think... but for some reason I thought we were in the 60s, but I think we're in the 70s. No, it's we're just... definitely in the 70s, because uh, we're flies. past oxygen and all that kind of stuff. Now we're in uncharted territories. Well, with this whole quarantine, like Claire showed me the picture again, it's everybody with birthdays in March and April again. And they're all just, it's like that sad guy on the chair by himself and like yeah. a little party hat by himself. It's like my second quarantine birthday. Yeah, seriously. It's crazy. Sorry, marchers. Yeah, that's something. You, the little unlockers. Speaking of quarantine, though, and it's rather fitting what we're talking about today. Today, yeah, 97%, I believe, AMC movie theaters are now open in the United States. And I'm not going to go. Same. But hopefully that means good things for the stock I bought at a rather high price. <laughs> oh, like you bought again because of the announcement or? No, no, no. I bought AMC a while ago. Oh, okay. like when it was the meme? Like Yeah, and then it, and then it just. It, it was GME <sighs> was the first meme and then it was like AMC was two. Well, and then and there then was. Three was like Blackberry. Yeah, Nokia. Sundial. Well, Sundial was like a one day. You had to be there, kind of thing. Um, most people weren't. Most people bought in when it was like four thousand percent or whatever, and then they're like, "I just lost everything," because I'm like two hours it dip. Um, AMC's almost back, even for me. But yeah, movie theaters slowly opening up. The world is slowly getting back, or at least America, on track. It's recovering. Yeah, because I think currently nature is healing. Forty percent of all U.S. adults have gotten the hmm. vaccine so far. I think. Uh, 30%. 30%. And I think I'm actually due on the list soon because I technically have asthma, so I guess that bumps me up a little bit. Oh, that's nice. But we have to figure that out. Cause, yeah, but, you have it. but that also doesn't... It's like a separate thing because I'm also with Kaiser and they have a different waiting list. So I guess you could get this vaccine through something else, but I don't know. Claire was telling me about it and more specifically, she was telling me what her dad told her and he's in the whole government medical field thing so he mm. probably knows much better than i do but amc's opening up and i had to bring that up because today's episode is all things dc yes because it's been quarantines so not much stuff happens so yeah a release like this is a big deal it's a pretty <laughs> big deal well and it's a four-hour movie like you don't normally see a no. A theater or something kind of released like this ever. Last time, I think there was something like that was like Gone in the Wind. The granted, is it released in theaters? Probably this the Snyder Cut. No, I think it's just HBO. Just Max. HBO yeah, Max? I would think okay. it's HBO Max because HBO pay, Max paid for it and then gave Snack Snyder like an additional like fifty million or something like that. I could be pulling that number out of my ass, but they gave <laughs> him an additional mo- number to like finish the movie. That makes sense because that's what I was thinking too. Is like. Four hours in like God. a movie theater. Like who? Four hours. I, I'm going to say it. I marathoned it. Didn't take one break. I, I also marathoned it. I also marathoned it too. But I think with that being said, it was because I rather enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it. And I, not at one point was I like, I'm watching a four hour movie. Like, uh, I felt that way, like in Wonder Woman, the new one. Like I was like, I'm watching. Like this is kind of it was kind of a miss. Like, like yeah, and like no point did I ever feel like that during the Justice League movie or like the new one, the old one. They're not even comparable. Like for people who are like 
Cause like I was watching it with Sydney. She's like, didn't we see this already? And I was like, it's not even the same movie. Like, so like I had to explain to her that like the whole Zack Snyder lost the movie because he showed this four hour movie to the like higher ups. And they were like, no way we can put this movie. Like you got to bring this down to two hours. And he's like, I'm not going to do that. So then they're like, all right, we're going to get someone else to do it. Well, bad movie. We should go ahead and say for those listening, uh, we're not do- talking spoilers yet. Just we yet. will later in the podcast, though. Yeah. And when we do it, we'll give you a heads up if you want to click out. Or I'll possibly go back if I remember to be like, skip forward to audio time length or something like that. Um, yeah. But so right now, no spoilers. We're just going to talk general no overview. Rob said he enjoyed it. Blue overview. Just boom. What did you think? Doesn't have to I... go too deep right now. Pardon your regularly scheduled podcast listening for this short ad break. After the years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service starting at 15 bucks a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after speaking with them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. By cutting out retail stores, there's no crazy overhead cost that gets passed down to you in form of a mystery fee. Instead, Mint Mobile passes those sweet savings on to you. For people looking for extra savings, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. Using your own phone with Mint Mobile plan and keeping your same phone number along with your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get a plan shipped directly to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gg. That's mintmobile.com slash gg. Cut your wireless bill into just 15 bucks a month with mintmobile.com slash gg. I thought it, for me it was like a solid like like six and a half out of ten movie. I thought it was way better than the original Justice League. Not hard to do. Not hard to do, but it was so much better. I expected kind of a meme because Batman vs Superman in all iterations was hot steaming dog piss. Pretty bad too. <laughs> and this is the same dude who made that movie. But Justice League was for what it was. There was definitely moments where I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm watching a four-hour movie. But there was also definitely moments where I was hype. Like, I popped off, and a lot of the additions... There was a character I did not care about at all in the original, and by the end of the Zack Snyder cut, was my favorite character in the whole movie. So You can um, can say name, it's not really a spoiler. Cyborg is dope oh yeah, yeah. i well, love cyborg now because he actually got they did him right it, it, they information did him right. yeah they did cyborg and, right yeah. and cyborg cyborg's already one of my favorite characters and i hated him in the original and in Zack snyder cut i i genuinely cared about cyborg and that's more than i could say about the rest of the characters in the movie but i thought it was for what it was it was pretty good Six and a half out of ten for me. Okay, that's a decent some, blue score. That's still a some decent pretty, blue. still some pretty terrible moments, which we'll go into. Yeah. So, Rob, if you had to give it a score, what would you have given it? Uh, on my scale, for a four-hour movie, you know, like uh, I'll tell seven you, seven and a half, eight, like somewhere around there. Like the, for, for I think the you would think in a four-hour movie, movie yeah. I would, huh? Well, I'm comparing it to like The Irishman, which is probably the longest movie I've sat through. I, that aside movie from, I heard was too. I had no desire to sit through that. That was, that was shorter than this, I think, and comparatively, it felt three times longer. Uh huh. Irishman. And was, and my my thing is is like I'm a big DC fan. I think I've said this before. When I was a kid, it was the Justice League cartoon show. Yeah, Marvel on, was stupid. I, and it was, and I, I, it wasn't that Marvel was stupid. I just thought they were for the toddlers, you know. I thought I my generation, the older, cooler kids, liked the DC and like the. We had Blue Minecraft. Eating. They had Roblox. <laughs> they know? liked Marvel. You know what I mean? Like, um, and I loved um, the Justice League cartoon show on the uh, on Cartoon Network. I thought it was super awesome. Um, so I'm a big. So keep that in mind too when I like 
give these scores. So I know not many people can sit through a four hour superhero movie, but like a four hour superhero justice league movie to 10 year old Rob sounds like crack cocaine. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so I, I give it an eight. I give it an eight, which is a really good score. Good score. Way higher than I thought I would give it. Yeah. So I'll say brief overview for me. I hated it. Really? Is what I'm not going to say. I love yeah. it. Oh, I love it. I said your response to Dork. I was like, baited? it? I was baited. I loved it. Good. That's good to hear. Dare I say, I'd put it like 9 out of 10. Wow. wow. I, I enjoyed it that much. I liked it a lot, but there... Okay, so give give your overview. Let me hear it. Like, what... Well, first... I was what a, about it than the old one? It was a four-hour movie, and I wanted it to keep going. <laughs> I'll put that and like at no point did I was I like bro it's been a while or like are we getting towards the end or yeah. parts where I was losing interest I was dialed in the whole time I was about it and I think the additions I was gonna say the additions added hold on uh the additions helped a whole bunch and I feel like I just got more of everything I wanted and it made it much more like I guess the argument can be made like it's still Zack Snyder's, Snyder's fault that he couldn't get his vision into two and a half hours or whatever it was. Yeah. But I or think he did somehow make it. a part one or part two or something like yeah. that. Or... But he definitely did it in four hours. So he had the right idea. It's just that, you know, the pushback and everything was just like, we can't release something that long. Which understandable, I think the average audience isn't going to be like oh, let's go to the theater today oh here's a four-hour movie yeah about like, uh superheroes let's go watch that and old he executive heads would never let that slide by either like no way they would let a four-hour movie like so we can get into nitty-gritty stuff later but all around it was almost as fantastic as henry cavill's muscles or henry cavill i forget which one it is i say it wrong henry one, cavill one. is it cavill I'm pretty. I don't think anyone calls him Cavill. Well, <laughs> I, I think just say I Henry said Joe, I don't have to. Well, avoid I think the I said Cavill, and someone's, and then I was. Pre, it was one way or the other. I think I said Cavill, and they said no, it's Cavill, or I said Cavill, and they said it's Cavill. I say that really handsome guy. I wish I looked like that guy. Yeah, that's the only thing that took me out of the movie. I was sitting there like, I gotta, I gotta go get the pump, dude. Like, look at that back. So anyway, aside from me simping over Henry, uh, I really liked it. And that's my brief overview. We can go now more into detail and spoilers. Um, so if you wanted just yeah. the overview and now you want to go see it yourself or whatever and wait for your own opinions, do that. I will say that's what I did. Early reviews and stuff were coming in about the movie. I stayed away from I everything. didn't look either. Yeah. yeah, I did too. I stay away from everything. I stay away from that for almost everything now, but especially this. I don't want anyone even giving me or tainting my perception of what i'm about to to watch i don't want to have any of this kind of stuff he wants to be pure yeah it's like, like in I the back of your mind you're gonna, you're gonna try and like think about why that guy thought that way the yeah entire like, movie there should be subliminal stuff and then i'll be thinking and they're like well he thought this why would you whereas if i just go in <laughs> myself completely i know exactly where i stand and what i thought on my own stances then i can compare it to what people are saying and then I know that it wasn't influenced by any outside sources. Like during the beginning of the movie, I think Claire was saying something like, did you know when they were like reshooting? I was like, babe, let me Shut watch up. the movie. Yeah, I was like, let me watch yeah. these four hours. I'm going to stop it. Let me immerse myself. I don't want to know about any of that stuff. Let's just. Man, yeah. Claire's even a manga reader in the movies. Like, when it, Well, when yeah, she was afterwards or well, even before she's like, yeah, I've been seeing all the reviews. I'm like, babe, stop. Don't tell me. I, I don't want to know the reviews. I don't look them up for a reason. I do not hear it. In fact, I got upset with her because when when we decided we were going to like watch it before this week's podcast, so we pushed the recording a little bit later. That night or whatever, I was like, babe, like, can you look up um, what time the movie comes out? Because I thought it was coming out like Thursday midnight. Yeah, so, no, it had already been out that like, Yeah, day. so I like, wanted to clear it up. And then she's like, S says here, um, Zack Snyder's Justice League falls short and is too long. And she's like, read me a review. I was like, <laughs> I like, stop it. I was like, babe, what are you doing? <laughs> she's like, I'm reading you. I'm Did I say I want the date, the time? Tell me the time. I don't want to know what people are thinking. She's like, well, how was I supposed to know? I thought you, he says, right. And she like keeps reading it. I'm like, 
just tell me the time. It's like, I don't want, I don't want the reviews. I don't want to know what people are thinking right now. We had a little, little tiff. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was sitting there like, whoa. Yeah, like, what, yeah, like, what are you doing? That doesn't sound like a time. And then she's like, yeah, I can't it, find it. Yeah, it had come out like, because I had messaged Blue that morning. And I, I had let him into, uh, let him use my HBO. Yeah. So uh, I did have to end my workout early, though, because it was that day. I was like, it's almost like five o'clock. If I don't start this movie now, like, it's going to be my bedtime. Yeah, I, we started at four, I think. And we finished around like eight, eight thirty. I had to stop it for like 30 minutes because Sydney had to go and like check um, something. And the whole time I was like, please get home. Please get like, I want it. <laughs> and it was in a juicy scene, too. It was a. Okay, well, we're we're, we're technically talking spoilers, so what scene was it? Okay, we are talking spoilers. We are here. All right, uh, yeah, I guess if we, we should just... There's no way we're just going to say this for the rest of the podcast. Let's no, be real. No. Okay, now, uh, now, okay. I, now we'll say. Spoiler talk starts now. Okay. Mr. Fruit okay. will put the no, timestamp no, 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 in no. the video. He will... In the description will be like, spoiler talk starts at this time. All right, everyone. Here we go. Well, Bob, one thing one thing I will say about this movie I that can't believe they showed Henry's penis. Wait, what? <laughs> that they my, minus one off the bat. How does he and walk I'm, around with that thing? And I'm sure you guys could guess what it was. That honest already out the bat made the movie a nine out of ten. I don't care if it was a perfect movie, it would have still been a nine out of ten. Wait, it was what? The four three aspect ratio, dude. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. my Dog god. Dog shit. Admittedly, Dog shit. admittedly. I hate it at the start, and I by the end care. of the movie, I pretty much forgot that it was sure. There. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about it. But like for the first hour, hour and a half, it is pretty annoying and hard for me to not feel like I'm watching a TikTok or something, or like something like a movie that was made for the phone, or I, I don't know. I I hate it. I felt like 25 or 30 percent of my TV was useless. <laughs> I did pause it at like six minutes because I was like, did we start it in like the wrong? <laughs> Like yeah. that choose the wrong aspect ratio and I looked it up and oh, I was like man. and then I was like well he might also do a thing because it was still it felt like there was like this before time so I was like maybe he'll movies have done it where they'll change aspect ratio it's rare but I was like maybe he'll just change aspect ratio Wanda Vision yeah Wanda something like that for, for instance and um, and, and then it just stayed that way and honestly I didn't care at all Um, I just looked it up because I was curious why he did it Um, and I think I actually yeah, I was here. wondering. Like, I saw like to stick to his creative vision. I'm like, what uh, kind of, well, like, well, what the, do you? Well, as Go cool ahead, as that sounds, uh, the movie was, from what I'm understanding, is the intention was it was shot for IMAX. Yeah. Oh, and is that, and that is aspect ratio. If you guys have seen IMAX, yeah, and that ratio and IMAX. Oof, it's hot. I haven't seen an IMAX movie. What it is hot. Christian. Well, and I however. Think- on modern widescreen TVs, four by three does not look good. And also, apparently, Zack Snyder said, uh, "Heroes, you're right. Superheroes tend to be very vertical, and he wanted to capture them in a vertical aspect. Uh, and he said, no one's really doing that. Uh, in my opinion, I agree. Total fucking bullshit. But <laughs> well, I read something that when he was filming, I think." For Superman versus Batman or something, some IMAX scenes. Apparently, he just loved the full screen look, like the one point three aspect ratio instead of the one point four three three whatever. And so that was just part of it. He's like, "Yeah, I like this." And honestly, you know, sure. I literally after probably an hour, I didn't even notice anymore. Sure, I, I, I'm in the same boat. It. I didn't notice after an hour. Yeah. But it, I, I don't care. It would look better if it was 1080. Like, you know, normal I aspect ratio. I agree. Like, it would it would have looked better. But sure, I forgot about it, but it, it was just annoying. Right now. Right. So, uh, but then, so you said Sydney left during some scene. What scene was it? Oh, it was when um, Stephen Wolf gets the uh, mother box. Need to work on that name, by the way. That is probably, like, Infinity Stones is, like, cool. It oh. sounds easy to remember. Mother box. You know, well, see, I was thinking about it too. It's like, but you have to like name it something because you could name it something really I, yeah, strange. I and it, but like, it's literally, it's like, we need people to understand what the yeah. mother box is. It is this box, mother box, right? mother, yeah. box mother box, mother box, mother box, mother box. 
I agree. It doesn't have the same. But I was also thinking about it. I, I like, couldn't think of one. Like, yeah, I was like, but know. what would I name it? I don't know. Motherbox <laughs> works, right? Like, it does the job. Is it <laughs> yeah. like Motherbox? Is it as good as Infinity Stone? No. Yeah. Uh, so it was when uh, Should have been the Infinity uh, Box. is grabbing the Motherbox from Cyborg's dad. And Cyborg's dad, oh, yeah. it, like, activates it. And then, like, for when you're thinking about it, you're like, what the fuck did he just do that? Like, did, did do anything? He just killed himself. But then you learn, like, he's Five like, head. oh, yeah, that, that's why I was like, that's the first part of the movie where I was like, that was stupid. They just, like, made his dad die for no apparent reason ever. And then you find out that, like, his dad made it, like, the hottest thing on Earth. So Batman's like, I'll use my satellite. And then he uses his satellite. <laughs> okay, six right, satellites. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, six. Um, Please. My man. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, but Cyborg, they did. I love the Flash, dude. You know, I was telling Sydney this. I think it is extremely hard to interpret super speed in it's easy to do in comics and stuff because like it's just pictures you know what i mean with uh it's hard to represent super fast speed but also keep in the continuity of time and all that kind of stuff and i thought it was really cool how he interpreted the flashes kind of his speed and all that kind of stuff and how he moves and like just slightly moves all that kind of stuff and like to break the glass just slowly touches it and he doesn't grab her out of the thing. He has to slowly, you know, pull her. Just those little like details is that. That was probably my whole my favorite scene in that whole movie was that car crash. As as cliche as that sounds, because I know when he was making that, he was like, This is <laughs> this is the scene people are gonna like. And I loved it. Um are you, are you, did you hate that scene, Blue? That scene made me uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. I was it like was just, a little weird. I was like, just save her, dude. And then yeah, he, he like he of, like pushes her hair back. He just yeah, he, how, like lonely he, he is. <laughs> he grabs a glizzy, and I'm just here like, bro. The glizzy made sense. Just, I was like, bro, just save her. It, the, when he was I, pushing the hair, I was okay. Like, all right, dog. Like, come on. all right, bro. Like, just save her. I, I, I have to say the my favorite shot in the movie, which I popped off, was uh, him reversing time at the oh, end of the movie okay yeah i wanted to bring that up because i'll be Holy honest that was badass too Holy shit he wasn't about it but i loved it i've blocked out most of the original justice league that wasn't in it right no no that, yeah. was, no. that wasn't not That's even close like, justice was, league yeah. just justice league gets a gets the auto dub like it's they not, have no problem winning the first flash movie, literally has to important. save the day well that's mm -hmm. what i was because i was sitting here it's like this is sick i think i would have remembered this like yeah no you would have absolutely <laughs> remembered it well and my favorite part was one in this one, it did a way better job of like slowly leading you up into that moment of Flash's powers. Because one, Batman talks about how he had this premonition essentially. Because if you remember, I think it was Batman or Superman, the Flash just randomly showed up in his cave and was like, Lois mm -hmm. Lane is the key in the left. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. And he talked about like, I had a premonition or whatever that like he was talking to Wonder Woman. I, like he showed up here and now he's over, blah, blah, blah. And that's when I remembered. Um, so it's like, okay, time travel, but clearly he hasn't figured that out yet. But then when he was trying to, when he was in Superman's ship trying to get a charge big enough for the mother box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the time reversal. The time, yeah, just, but just you saw bit. the box just start to come up and I was like, he's starting to bend the time. Tease. And then, yeah, and then at the very end, I was like, he's going to do it. He's gonna do the thing, and then he did the thing, and it was sick. Oh, I popped yeah, up. Well, that, that's really my cool. favorite part like of this film. And behind him is the time coming back. Is sick. yeah, it's those small little nods to that are like alluding to something bigger. That's the biggest strength of this film is context of everything. Like if you don't have this context, things just don't make sense. And so much of that got removed in the. It was like an hour and a half cut. of context now. Uh, yeah, and, and and I mean, yeah, there's so much context to that that Zack Snyder lost that just made the movie without it looked really stupid. Like him, like 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 you said, the dude blowing himself up for no reason. Yeah, it wasn't for yeah. no reason. They exactly. literally take they take ten seconds out of the movie to be like, wait a minute, he superheated it. Oh, yeah. he marked it. Why was that not in the original cut? Yeah, it's just like oh. That's like that makes sense. So dumb. I don't. But, but if if his dad died like that in the first movie, I don't even remotely remember that. Like I I have that first Justice League movie. Well, they like, also recast his mind. dad. That whole his uh, dad was an entire recast for that movie. Um, and then 
Yeah, so the, the bending of time and stuff, and then like in that scene when it's like you see Superman's like body start reforming like from the blood. Oh, like, from the, yeah, that was sick. And like you see his hands. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was really really cool. I'll still say, still gets me. Honestly, as nerds as it sounds, still gave me goosebumps though. When Superman comes back and the Flash slows time, and Superman still just like oh. follows him, and yeah. he's like. What the? <laughs> that yeah. was still. I get that. I still that knew stuff. that was coming, Beans. and it still made me laugh. <laughs> I thought I, to me though, it's so sick. Like because it just hypes up even more. Like you really understand. Like dude, like what the How fudge do you OP. do against Superman? Yeah, like because there's nobody like that in the Marvel universe. I don't think there's no apparent like thank OP, God. Like well, thank God. Honestly, it, it kind of feels like man. Scarlet Witch is getting there. And what the yeah, Scarlet Witch is. Scar yeah, Scarlet's getting there. Um, I'm honestly very thankful they don't have a character like that in Marvel because uh, Superman was my least favorite part of this film. He's I'm always gotta say it. He's always. I gotta say it. He's he's my least favorite part of this. Film. It, it, I always. It's hard to make Superman not because if you don't make Superman the most powerful, and if you just whoop Stephen Wolf's ass, well, it's which not he really does. about. It's not really about the power level. It's just like uh, I feel like Superman's just so fucking boring. And they don't like, fix like that. His, you didn't like the Lou. Oh, okay. Wait, I just remember my favorite scene. It, can we talk about the Martian Manhunter and like how <laughs> that was like the sickest like cameo ever? Like, like she, the Martian Man. First of all, it's Lois Lane, and I, what you believe is Clark Kent's mom or Superman's mom, and they're having a conversation, and she's like, "You need to move on, and you need to move forward." And like I think she convinces her to go see him or something like that. Or well, convinces trying to get it back back to the land of living, go back to work, whatever. Like just yeah. Exist again. And so, um, and then you he she like leaves, and you come to find out that it's like this alien guy who is the Martian Manhunter, who I love and was my favorite character, and who I think is so fucking badass. And I like I was like design. I literally was like, yeah, his design was sick. Sydney was like, oh, there's dark, uh, dark side. And I was like, no, I like, I, I, yeah, yeah, I was like, no, I was like, I don't think that was him. I don't know who that was. I was like, but I think that was the Martian Manhunter. And then like, it goes the whole movie and you don't see any more Martian Manhunter oh, until the end. And then he like comes down and basically like just joins the Justice League pretty much. And is like my... He says, my like journey has brought me to Earth, and I like Earth is in my protection now. Well, he he something. said something like, uh, turns out like I too have a stake in Earth now, or whatever. Like I want to, yeah. It. Like uh, I need to protect this Earth for some apparent reason, and and then he's like, you can call me the Martian Manhunter, and he flies. I was like, oh my god, I can't <laughs> wait to never see anything of this yeah. ever again. <laughs> like, we'll talk about that later. Um. But that was super sick. That was one of my favorite cameos. Something I did not expect from this movie that we would get a Martian Manhunter cameo. Which well, that made me hype. Yeah, well, I guess we kind of touched on it because like, we're going all over the place. But the epilogue just made me sad because honestly, I was like, bro, if this is what they could have done and kept going, like, I think like you would think the next movie would be Dark Side wins, and then that epilogue would be what like, the movie after that. The whole be, right? universe they were setting up was like way more interesting now. Like I actually cared about uh, yeah. characters, and I was like, and then it kind of made me sad. It was like odds are this is it though. Like we'll never see any of this. This was the uh, the swan song. He was like, this is <laughs> what HBO it was supposed to be. Have the money to fund this universe. I don't know. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they get another shot at it. Well, Zack um, Snyder but... said WB Warner Brothers has no interest in doing anything else with him. So, and this was his vision. So, I have no idea. What are you saying, Blue? I, I wouldn't be surprised though if they. I mean, they got like fans literally willed this into existence. So I wouldn't be surprised if they willed more of the universe into existence. Um, yeah, I mean. What about uh, Cyborg I, Blue specifically did you like? Like dude, that made him okay. your likable for, character. So dude. for me, a lot of my opinion of the movie didn't change from the original to the to the new cut when it came to characters. Like I still hate Batman and Superman, how they're portrayed. Um, I don't blame you for that. Batman got a little better. Superman honestly got worse. He's eternally boring in this universe. Uh, Cyborg, though, 
holy shit layers i love cyborg when i like when so so cyborg's backstory is like one of the sickest like he's just like he's he's this he's this dude with a heart of gold that just just gets played this hand and it turns out that the hand he's played is actually you know a pretty good hand and then uh just when i when i first heard about just Sleek, i was like well they're gonna ruin cyborg i love this character <laughs> and then in this recut like oh my god they got us they got the story perfect like the backstory was literally like it couldn't be more perfect uh dude when the stimmy the stimmy <laughs> when when he, when he hit him with the joe bucks i was like that is so dope <laughs> And I was like, why was this not like its own movie? Like, why didn't Cyborg get his own standalone movie? That was like my recurring thing where it's like, why, why did we not that get a whole Flash? Like, little intro could have been a <sighs> well, movie. I, He's cool. I still stand by the fact, though, that I still agree that they overall rushed. 100%. Like, they were... No I doubt. think we talked they about it. They were just they playing catch-up. Yeah, they were trying to compete. Like, at the time, they were trying to do it. Too we're much practically, too soon. We're practically getting to, you know infinity or avengers infinity war or whatever They're yeah it's like you behind. do the first it's like you do the first cat that well that's the reason why the universe sex science universe is still ruined for me is it's like if you did the first avenger with captain america and you did iron man one and then immediately <laughs> marvel civil war yeah <laughs> like it's just way too soon and yeah. i mean i want to say that that wasn't if I want to say that you know if he had in a perfect world he would have done it slower I think yeah but I have to imagine oh, yeah, yeah. he got rushed like hey yeah Warner Bros was like we need we yeah. need the, we need we need a Avengers competitor like right now yeah so I still think that hurts yeah Justice League as all because I mean at this point as far as we know the the universe that they try to create as is is dead aside from like Wonder Woman and I guess she's just her own thing now. Um, so watching that, I feel like though we practically got like a different movie because it, it almost felt like not even, yeah, like night and day, it was giving us more. So what we, the context, like you said, the context we needed leading up to what was justice league that made way more sense, um, because they way more sense, like half of the new footage was cyborg, rightfully so he finally, Finally, it was like, okay, here's this dude instead of just like, wait, what? Um, okay, and then yeah. he's there, and then, okay, and that's it. Um, and then even just like, I enjoyed that flashing, like Rob said, just because even still, that was just a little bit more we saw of his character, even Oof. before it all happened. That was yeah, a little that, weird. Um, and then that revert, but that time reversal time scene, reverse. that's like... They never explain how he gets his powers, right? They just kind of... They're just like who are given you? given his own movie, which I think they are he's right? getting his own movie, right? I, I hope. I love him. Well, see, something like that. Ezra, right? What's his what's the actor's name? Yeah. Well, see, I'm gonna jump no, ahead a little awesome. bit to jump back, but you know the nightmare at the very end. Yeah. The K like nightmare because it's Batman. Um, it seemed like that was a different actor for the Flash. It was. Uh, I, I I'm sure they his, couldn't get Ezra or something. Uh, yeah, I uh, from what. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure he was just full CG in that flashback. He, he wasn't like or flashback recast in the or anything, though. No, I, was no, just, no, I, I think they just did full CG. Oh, okay. I think they just kind and of it just threw didn't look good. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I don't mean, even think they threw a guy. I think that oh, was legit. Really? I think that was legit a full CG person. Oh yeah, that was shit. That yeah, makes yeah, more sense bad. though, because I was like, I was like, wait, no, is yeah, it? I, I didn't take it as a recast. I took it mm -hmm. as a they couldn't probably get them because of COVID. Well, because that that was one of the reshoot scenes. Um, which we can that talk about scene later. was sick, and then the the Joker relationship with Batman and the kind of shit they allude to, like in their conversation, is like the dream Batman relationship with Joker well, I've always wanted. I appreciate it too because it called back to the Batman versus Superman, where we saw Robin's suit hung up with like the Joker writing on it, and he pretty much said like like remember when I killed your adopted son. Like, remember when I yeah. killed Robin? And I was like, oh. Well, and it made it seem like it was the one, like, I don't know if it's they they alluded to, like, the Joker cutting his face off because the, the Joker had cuts on his face or, like, when he pins somebody's face on his face. I don't know. It was really cool. And I was, I, I want to see more Jared Leto, Leto Joker. I said it. 
I said I'm gonna, it. Can I do a, I'm going to do a compliment sandwich. Um, <clears throat> yes. The line, why would you send a boy wonder to do a man's job? S tier. God damn. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Jared Leto. Going in. Damn, maybe you should play Joker. Well, I don't know why they, damn, they should have given you a chance. Um, uh, I'm going to get heat for this, and that's okay. okay. That's okay. I thought the Batman Joker scene was like the worst scene in the whole movie. Really? really? I thought I it was corny that. when he was like, I'm going to fucking kill you. I yeah. thought that was corny. I thought that, that, that was whole, corny. Like, that whole that was part, corny that was me. so corny. Um, I don't know what Jared Leto was going for in the monologue with Batman. And Batman, when he was like, like, I took me out of the movie so quick where he was like, and make no mistake, I will fucking kill you. Yeah, that I was, was like, like I was like, oh my God, dude. Like, Zack Snyder wrote this directly, didn't he? And I, mean, I, was, I, like I just thought, I just thought, All right. yeah, to each their own. I just thought that was like the. Cr- it felt like fanfare, See, I liked and that the was fine. If it, it the felt like a really that. weird YouTube fan, <laughs> fan film for me, and it was really bad. Uh, there was a couple lines in in their interaction that was just really good. Um, but for the most part, I was my least favorite part of the movie. But that would have been sorry. That's like, a, that's like a movie I'd want to see, though, and like that's what I think. Given to given in a that better dream. yeah, like, given like, that's what would have come. Given more, I think I do want to see that because like the like all of these storylines in DC are so fucking interesting, and I like, I mean, DC's comic books are way more interesting than Marvel's base like storylines like a lot of marvel stuff is joined from dc so i was really excited like we got dark side joker is just like the ultimate villain but that but that portrayal of joker in the nightmare was just not it for me um i will say i know a lot of people didn't like joker's laugh but i love joker's laugh. i did too. I like, like, I, 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 it yeah, just felt just a different and creepy different yeah, kind yeah I love Joker's Live. I the little like ugh, the little wheezes. I thought that was dope. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I thought that was yeah, like, I, a nice I liked touch. it. I liked it. I'll say so, I like that. I still I like that Joker um portrayal though better than the Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah, even, yeah, even I, with some sure. lackluster lines. So Boy Wonder Line, S tier. <laughs> the dialogue, which is my main issue with this whole movie, is the dialogue is always pretty bad. The dialogue, yeah. pretty awful. It did sell me on Jared Loker. Jared Jared Loker. It did <laughs> sell me. It did sell me on Jared Leto being Joker, though. Like no meme. I think Jared Leto could be a great Joker if they gave him a shot. But we probably won't get that shot. Feels bad. Well, so again, we're hopping all over the place because first off, it's a four-hour movie, so there's yeah. plenty of stuff to talk about. Um. But going back to that scene where the Martian Manhunter first talks to Lois in disguise as Clark so Kent's cool, mom. Dude. He's well, so cool. I think I think it was that moment. Yeah, she goes to get her ID card and I see the pregnancy test. And I was like, Well, that's not like just something you randomly put in a in a scene. And so that's I, not something you delete from a movie either. And so but I was left Fuck thinking Josh about Wayne, it. Dude. You fat douchebag. I was left thinking about it. And I was like, it, there has to be something to that. And I found an article this morning where Zack Snyder pretty much said, this is what he, he like, he didn't exactly explain everything, but he said this is where he wanted to take the universe if it had worked. Um, and it had to do exactly with um, Superman's son. And according to Vanity Fair and Snyder's planned storyline, Batman would have sacrificed himself during the corp or during the course of the third Justice League film as part of a plan to ensure Darkseid is defeated. Years later, Superman would bestow the responsibilities of Batman onto his son. So Superman's son would become Batman in the That would have been sick. Yeah. We would have got a recast Ben Affleck. And then we could have gone with a new Batman, younger Batman. Think like Batman Beyond. That'd be sick. What the fuck? Yeah. But so like God damn it, Joss Whedon! It goes to show he had like he had the whole thing planned out. Um But like uh, that's a bummer. How would you cut that four hour movie? If I was in charge of cutting that four hour movie into two hours, dude, I'd be in. Well, that's what I'm well, saying. I, it, well, I thought I don't he didn't have a choice, is what I'm understanding. Like And the fact I again it was like they expected him because then again, 
how do you make a Justice League film where you have no backstory on more than half of the characters in Justice League? Yeah. Compelling in a two and a half hour movie. Like, I honestly think he probably did the best that he could. Yeah. But and I then, think that's the problem. He should have had more time. Another m- movie. Two mo- Previous, like, give us a complete different, like, Cyborg and Flash movie. Suddenly you yeah. don't need any of that. You know? We, we needed a Cyborg and Flash movie before we got... Yeah. Before we got Batman vs. Superman and before we got Justice League. 100%. I agree. If we got those, I would have been hyped. Yeah, my, uh, but we didn't. My, my little brother texted me, who's like super into comic books and like reads all the comics and stuff, and was like, the fact that they mentioned like the anti life equation was like. This, oh, like, yeah. That I was. Is, like, that finally gave it a lot ever. more. That whole backstory they added gave it way more. Like, like oh, oh and then I, the battle scene that battle scene like i was Thor, like was dope. oh it was so sick like i remember being in the it's movie Zeus. the original movie and being like i want to see that <laughs> like i want to see that scene and then like nothing you didn't see any of that and then in this movie you fucking see like a 25 minute battle yeah like yeah. it's sweet there was um what you call it uh oh what the fudge the the archer what? I can't remember. It starts with an A, I think. Oh, Athenius or Athe- 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 uh, Yeah, for the life of me, I can't remember. But yeah, it was like next to Zeus and stuff, and you saw the god and everybody fighting together. I was like, and, and then like sick. Hercules is there too. Like it, it's so cool. And, and then, then like and man, then just, Amazon, and then he just slices the neck open of Dark Dark Seed, and he's just like bleeding out. I was like, this is sick. Yeah, it's so sick. And then I guess like the anti life equation, what will, will gives like Dark Side like control of like every sentient life on planet. And apparently my little brother was saying that they kind of nerf dark side, but I mean, you kind of have to like, cause apparently dark side can literally do anything and everything. Well, I'm dark side. Well, the backstory of the anti life is that's kind of the thing that dark side always is, is always chasing in the comics. And it's for good reason. Like literally the anti life equation. As, I'm going to simplify it. When dark side it's has the anti life, Okay, when Darkseid has the anti-life equation, Darkseid could be like, yo, you should kill yourself. And you'd be like, fuck, he's right. <laughs> you got a good point. I'm Shit, he's right. I'm dead now. I'm going to kill myself. So the anti-life equation basically is... Uh, I don't know, uh, a way to control uh, just any sense of life. A you way can to control, control people's minds. It's life. called an anti-life for a reason, right? Like he can be, he w- will base, he basically has the ability to, to tell. And, and if he had like uh, a way to, like, to talk to everything in the universe, which would not be difficult for dark side, it would be like, yo, kill yourself. Shit. All right. <laughs> kill self. Yeah. Which is what dark side wants. So. And it's on earth. Like it's, 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 it's on it's, earth. Just when they did the anti life question, I was like, okay, they're doing this. All right. They're doing this. Okay. I, I will say one of the plot holes I really didn't like is the fact that they know they left the mother boxes on the planet they left anti life on. Yeah, Why? that's what I was wondering. Like, how do you not know that? Yeah. It... <laughs> like, Seven Wolf was like, I found anti life. And they were like, wait, really? And it was like, yeah, it's on the same planet where all the mother boxes are. And they're just like, oh, fuck, for real, dude? Yeah, and I was that, just like, that was my Why thing. wouldn't you? I feel like that's kind of a gift. Like you left anti-life on the same planet you left the mother box. It's like what? All right, whatever. Mm. I'll I'll allow it. <laughs> Keep going. It's been a hundred. He's a hundred thousand planets later. You know, he's like, yeah. All that's right. why I, I was like, you know? I'm believing in flying dudes and all that kind of stuff. Like, I whatever, go for it. Well, I liked how they communicated. I thought that was a really cool touch. Like how like he burns the metal or whatever. Oh and, yeah. Like, talks to someone. I thought that was a cool way of doing that. Pardon your regularly scheduled podcast listening for this short ad break. We're all looking for ways to save money, right? Especially now. So let me ask you this. How would you like to save an extra $961 a year in your pocket? That's how much Gabby customers save per year on average on a car and home insurance. This is the time of year we go shopping for insurance. Well, Gabby takes the pain out of shopping for insurance by giving you apples to apples comparisons of your current coverage with 40 of the top insurance providers like Progressive, Nationwide, and Travelers. Before Gabby, I used Farmers Insurance for about eight years. I was overpaying for insurance. I just linked my insurance account and in minutes, Gabby showed me I could be saving $150 on my insurance. It was super easy and fast to use. It's simple. Just link your current insurance account, and in just minutes, you'll be able to see quotes for the exact same coverage you already have. 
Like I mentioned earlier, Gabby customers save $961 per year on average. It's literally what I did. I literally linked my insurance account and they showed me the exact amount of money I could save. So what are you waiting for? You're probably overpaying on car and home insurance. See how much Gabby can save you. It's totally free to check and there's no obligation. Go to Gabby.com slash GG. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash GG. Gabby.com slash GG to see how much money you can save on your car and home insurance. What? Well, it also like made um, the whole villain arc more make more sense too because he's like, well, I'm trying to redeem yeah. myself, and he's like, wait a second, like I can impress him now. Like this is what he's been looking for, the only planet to ever beat him. And so I was like, I'm buying into it, and I was like, can't wait to see where this goes. And I remember it's like that probably won't. That was that's probably it, unfortunately, because like the the way it ends. It set up like seven different movies if it wanted to. Seriously, like you said, yeah. Martian Manhunter. It set up Cyborg, yeah, Flash, probably different Wonder Woman, a different Batman because we have Deathstroke show up trying to hunt Batman. Lex Luthor escape. Now that was Will Smith's character, right? Or no? No, like, Will Smith okay. was Deadshot. That's okay. Deadshot and Deathstroke are two different different people. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that was played by um, uh, Joey, uh, the wife of uh that girl, in Modern Family. Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, the uh, Gloria, what the fudge? You would know her if I show, show you. But he's great. Um, so I like oh, seeing Sophia his character. Vigara? Yeah, his his uh, her husband. Uh, I mean, I just know that show. I don't yeah. know, like, any specific. He's a big D and D guy too, actually. Um, cool. But anyway, yeah, all these different things showing up, um, like Martian Manhunter showing up. You had the whole Lex Luthor thing and everything. Um, I feel like there's even I, some more cameos I, that it's like I don't care about Aquaman and this new cut didn't make me care any more about yeah, Aquaman the, or the Aqu- Aquinian. I, I like <laughs> I like Aquaman a lot more Aquinian. in his movie. In this movie, he's still like a dude, bro. Yeah, like I, I appreciate the like I, I like his interpretation of Aquaman. Like I don't not like that. It's just like the Athenians or just the their kind of I don't know. I didn't like it. The 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 other the only other thing I didn't it like bore me. That was the only thing that bore me. I don't know why Zack Snyder like keeps making Atlantis look like a shithole. Whereas, well, because I think it's supposed to be like past its prime or whatever, right? Like ever since the king died or something. No, in, in did you watch uh, Aquaman? The it was a little while ago. It was it was way better. It was like yeah, this it's is like this and like, this oh. is this. oh yeah yeah I know what you're they talking. always make this like is the it. Atlantis like broken down and run down and yeah they make statues. it look like a total shithole and I was like why do they keep making it like a shithole I don't get it um, I see what you're saying though. oh and then uh what else I liked uh they set up Green Lantern movies you know when that Green oh. Lantern dude dies and then the ring yeah. flies off set up green lantern and i love green lantern i like how for a second he's like wait a second yeah he's like like, (laughs) yeah and the ring's like "Uh uh-uh you ain't grabbing me like i thought that was really cool and then like you see uh, that's we need a green lantern and not like the ryan reynolds green give him another shot john stewart something like that like green lantern in this universe would be sick oh so cool i love the green lantern green lantern and the martian manhunter s tier which may be a hot take. Well, so what I like to well, one I Superman is obviously OP. That's all there's to it. Yeah, you. But you, you lose. I still I think I might have mentioned it. I like how they did it in Justice League, and I like it even more in this one. They still set it up to be like, yo, this is how strong he is, and then when he finally shows up, we're gonna show you just how strong. Like it felt like, yeah, yeah, Superman's okay. here. Superman this is, is the man. <laughs> game changer. Yeah, and so I think they did a good job of actually not just making it feel like he rolls over everything although he, he does but they set it up so like it just wasn't op when he does it has a payoff and yeah feel like, like a cop out like yeah Superman exactly showed up. everything's okay and like there's even a little callback like steppenwolf um when he was like reporting back he's like there are no sign of like kryptonians because like evidently they know like yeah Yo, those are bad dudes like we <laughs> avoid them if we can so they even know like across all these worlds they've gone to it's like yo kryptonians i'm out yeah um and then when he shows up well one i still love the little scene when he's fighting the justice league like they with fixed the, flash. the uh they fixed the weird mouth thing. yeah the mustache that, thing that, that, yeah that wasn't there anymore um but like when he does with the flash interaction and then with wonder woman she headbutts him he's like okay kaboosh and just like headbutts <laughs> yeah. her down 
those little things. Well, and she then, headbutts him. He's like, oh, like, yeah. He's like, oh, okay. I'll play this game. <laughs> um, and then still, like, I I love it when he shows up. Like, it, it's just like this whole movie. You're like, dude, Steppenwolf's like a nobody stands dude. a chance. His armor was sick. I was a fan. Yeah, I thought his cool his armor was sweet. But he shows up, and then Superman throws him around like a rag doll, and just sitting there, just like boosh, boosh, just like just ground pounding them. I have a hot take. Yeah, hit me with it. I did not like Superman's black suit. I did. Why isn't he though. wearing the normal one? Uh, like, is there a reason him? he's wearing the black suit, or he's been? Like, I think it was more so the- metaphoric. Like he's been reborn. Yeah, I I will say the symbolically choosing the black suit was a little weird, but I like I it grew on me because it looks sick. <laughs> All I, black I baby, see, I'm, I, I'm weird. I like the the blue with the red and the the. I do I too. Think but... I think like, the blue I think that red better. It makes more sense in context. Uh, but God, man, like that black suit, like whew, it's so nice. I don't think it's, Batman and I don't think Batman and Superman should ever be sharing the same color palette. Color, yes. Because at the end shot where it just has all the Justice League, I was like, yeah, this Batman should have come out with his red and blue suit. Yeah, this would look this would look way better if they didn't have like, the same color suit like, on. But, He's like, yeah, I just got it. Yeah, but but God, that black suit's sick though. Oh, you know what I really liked too? I thought it was really cool that like Cyborg like talks to machines. Like he's like, this one wants to fly. He's like, you talk to machines. Why was that on the original movie? It was so cool. I was like, that is like, I was like, that is so interesting. Like, of course, he can talk to like machines and technology and stuff like that. I was like, that just makes sense, you know? Oh, that, um, Roger, I forgot the name, but they set up another superhero. He was the assistant to his dad, um, at the end. Oh, I, that, I, that flew over my head. I, I knew when they were like, when he said something, well, I literally I was like, paused okay, it. I was like, that, I don't remember that name. Look it up because that has to be somebody. And it was. Yeah, I heard that and I was like, I don't know who that is, but that means something. You don't just I'll name watch. drop some random dude. The <laughs> yeah. Film like hey, that. are you? Uh... <laughs> yeah, actually. So that set up another thing. Um, Which yeah. we, will, we will probably never see any of these. Like... Well, that's this bummer. Like, I can only hope. But like now, too. Now that he knows what he would have done, and like now that he said, like, yo, if this was what was going to happen, now we're not going to get that. Even if something by mo- some miracle happens again, it'll have to be different. Um, because like Warner Brother owns DC, right? Like, it's not, yeah, is DC like its own studio, like Marvel is, or I don't, I don't think know. so. Like, I don't know how any of this works. Or... Not, I think it's the same way Disney now owns Marvel, so it's like Warner Brothers owns Marvel, kind of the way I think so, or yeah. Disney, own, or yeah, okay, pretty sure. Could be wrong. Don't quote me though. But just like overall, so one there was like more fight scenes too, like we talked about, like even like that throwback war. But then um, I'm pretty sure that entire Wonder Woman scene at the beginning wasn't in the original, right? No, I, it wasn't because I know for a fact that like I remember I was like, no way in that movie did I remember a terrorist trying to shoot people and, and her Wonder Woman them. blowing her up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, but I don't like, think that happened. Same thing though, like during that fight, it was just so dope seeing Wonder Woman just like go ham. Yeah, and hey, like just yo, be Wonder Woman. Can we talk about why would you cut the scene where she tells the little girl you can be anything? <laughs> that <laughs> was the precious. most Wonder Woman scene I have ever seen, and Josh, he cut that. that out of the movie. <laughs> why? That was, that was good. I like that little scene. Um, but that was just like so much more. There was more action when there was, and it was good. And then wait, yeah, the way all, they, the exposition we needed when they kill Stephen Wolf, the way they do it, like literally, like Aquaman oh, comes Ste- out of nowhere. And Wonder just, Woman, I was like, she's not just decapitates him. I was like, that's okay. and that's where I was kind of like, I'm down for this. If DC is the kind of movies where I can see that actually happen, because that's never gonna happen in a Marvel. Like, like, let's just say that for the record. That's never going to happen ever. If well, I can Thor see that, Thor literally decapitated, and we yes. didn't see anything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but like, but we didn't see know, any of it. You don't see the hand what do you rolling. Mean? You know, it, you it, just it was, see. Yes, we do. It was more implied. She picks up his head. It was more implied. How do you mean it's more implied? Dude, I don't literally her chops. Picking up I don't think she head. picks up his head. I think she just goes. Yeah, she closes know. his eyes. 
I don't remember that. Yeah, but like he's like y'all have not, recency bias. Even still, though, no, it's uh, not uh, like no, don't okay. don't start acting like DC is like an adult not, oriented I, movie. I I mean I'm saying it could be. I I kind of like that it has the blood and I, but I do hate the I'm gonna fucking kill you like that is corny. Like leave that shit at the door. Like that 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 has no place in. But that's just like bad writing. I think you could do it in a better way. I think because I think Mar or Marvel does it in so some ways, but DC did not hit it with the, and I will fucking kill you. Well, that's the big difference for me is I like the plot lines to DC films are so, well, the plot lines to DC comics in general are just so much sacred than Marvel's. But the difference in Marvel and DC for me is Marvel's dialogue has just gotten so good over the years and like how just to like build characters and like I re they make me really care about characters and DC hasn't really gotten the opportunity to really write the characters yet so you have so the dialogue is just eternally kind of butt tier in DC films but I mean if you gave Zack Snyder the chance I feel like he could do the same thing and I feel like he proved it with this movie personally yeah, and I, I think if you were like, Zach, dude, like, we need these in two and a half hours. I don't think he would have to be like, I need another four hours. I think he'd be like, look, I only made that movie four hours because that's what they fucking made me do. I had to make it in four hours. Like, I think if they're like, Zach, we'll give you two and a half hours to go on your dark apocalypse, whatever it is. Because I'm sure it's some comic book he's trying to follow that has been written. Uh, I love the movie. I... <laughs> I, I wouldn't give it a nine, but it it, it was it like did it what a much. movie was supposed to do, and it fucking entertained the shit out of me. Did you know, and, fun fact, I think currently it is the second highest rated IMDb superhero movie, only behind The Dark Knight. Really? God. And if you're going Rotten so, Tomatoes, I think it has a 97% audience score, and um, critics are almost 80%. I, I really enjoyed it. I, it made me want more DC and it made me feel DC was actually on the level of Marvel. It did. Like I was like, holy shit. I can see my favorite heroes, how the people who see their favorite Marvel superheroes see them. Like Spider-Man, dude, give me a give me a Martian Manhunter movie, dude, and he'll kill it. And everybody will love Martian Manhunter. Like sure, everybody like Martian Manhunter, but everybody did that with Guardians of the Galaxy. So it, yeah. it's just kind of the steps. Beast Boy win. That's the real question. Uh see, I like to see T and Teen Titans. If we're talking Teen Titans, I like Cyborg. Cyborg wish, was my favorite. I one. wish we Teen got Titan. Teen Titans. Raven, movie, dude. That'd be sick. Isn't there a Teen Titan, but it's really cringe? Like fuck Batman. Well, yeah, like, there's like guy, a TV like show or something. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even bother with that one. We don't need to talk about that. It doesn't exist. T DC TV shows are a pretty big miss, I believe. I don't. They think were was. see that was the, and see that was that was not the sentiment years ago. People were like DC television, <laughs> oof, so good. And yeah, um, I guess there was that Gotham like one. I felt yeah, like I heard that Gotham was actually pretty decent. That TV show. Yeah, and then we started getting like new CW DC, and it kind of ruined it. But I mean, you know, here we are. I did watch it is what it is. Green Arrow or whatever his name is for the first Arrow. few seasons. It wasn't that bad. Well, it was a good. Well, I mean, like back in the day, that was like holy shit. We've never gotten a superhero TV yeah, show. Like it was, that. I, yeah, that it was, was like one of the first. And then I didn't keep up with the later seasons or any of the other ones that came out. With, but back in the day, DC TV was the heat, and now it's well, it's about the same tier as DC movies, but <laughs> yeah. pre Aww. pre Snyder cut. But this made me feel like it, they they can be there and be better. I am more interested in what dc had like where that universe was going than where marvel is going currently 100 um, and that but that i'm a yeah. big dc fanboy yeah i mean yeah. Well, we also fanboy. don't really know where marvel's going right now marvel is almost seemed like where scarlet it's... witch is gonna be like the next big that's how i took that as is that the well scarlet that's the witch difference is gonna be the next big villain this continues to be the difference is marvel you don't know exactly where they're going with the next thing but they're still building these characters piece by piece. And it matters so much because when it happens, like I'm never, it, it depresses me. I'm never going to get like a Captain America raising the hammer moment in DC. I became an eight year old child when, so like the most when he ever. picked up that hammer. Like that was like <laughs> top five high moments of my life. And it like, is. it could happen in DC 
where like just we don't know what that no comic book be. spoilers because I fucking have I have I've read way too many of these comics and <laughs> if they ever do do it in cinema like it would be tight but like I love DC comics so much and I just wish but that I mean we... it's so hard though to like you have to make the comparison but it's unfair again to be like well this is where Marvel sits and again it's because Marvel's been going since 2008. Marvel and has been cranking. working at this for a long yeah. time. They have like to get a track record. to get these eight year old re- re- reactions out of you. They have like whereas Warner Bros was movies like and... Warner Bros was like, yeah, fucking Eat it. Eat let's it. just let's just blow let's just <laughs> blow our to. loads blow our loads on the sickest DC storylines immediately without context. I mean, it doesn't work. Yeah, it, they've made some fumbles, so that's why like. Even if you have to reboot it, that's fine. But I want to live in a world where we have the Marvel Universe thriving and the DC yes. Universe thriving. Yes. And they can thrive it's, it's on their own. You don't have both. to. Yeah, you don't. But then I get to enjoy both. And I know there are people out there, like my older brother, for instance, is like, there's nothing to watch. I hate superhero movies. And I understand the... you guys. But <laughs> I, I don't understand them. you at all. Yeah, but I'm a nerd. And there are a lot of people out there. It's more so. It's hey, not even some people anymore. like it's slice of life, Mister Fruit. You know, yeah, that's true. But so, like, I'm in the group. It's like some people are like another superhero movie's coming out. I'm like another superhero movie's coming out. Like, let's get it. And, and DC movies can be our Marvel par. Like we've seen Shazam. I don't know if you guys have seen Shazam or if the, if you're listening yeah, to this, if you've seen Shazam, great movie. I loved that movie. Probably at, under this, at, under Justice League, my favorite DC movie. I still think Wonder Woman, the original one. That's Aside like from this, probably. That's a good one. Probably my favorite. And then Aquaman, original Wonder like Woman still my favorite. I'd you, say, so you liked Wonder Woman more than first, the Justice League blue? First Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah. No. As, as like a standalone movie, like I still think the original Wonder Woman's a better film. The banger. But um like that's probably the only movie where I was like they got they me care about it. characters, like they, they set up some good world building. The dialogue was real good. Like Diana, she really sold me. Like Gal Gadot really sells Wonder Woman, like being a baby in this new world. I wish Wonder Woman Two was like that. Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, we don't talk about Wonder Woman Two. Yeah, it was that's yeah. <laughs> it could be better. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, but it could be better. See, so, yeah, it, it's just a bummer that I enjoyed it so much. Because yeah. like I went in with zero expectations. I I hadn't been reading about it. I knew it was going to be just woefully yeah. long and some reshoots and this was his vision that's all i knew that's all i wanted to know so i went in no preconceptions nothing and i walked out like that was sick that was sick and so for yeah. me i rated so highly one because it was a four-hour movie and <laughs> yeah I sat, that's hard to do i sat the whole way through like i was seriously like the epilogue claire's like this is a really long epilogue i was like Show me more scenes, more scenes. Like, more. Don't, yeah, don't let more. it stop. Yeah, I was like, shop, I want more. <laughs> um, and so that alone, especially because recently I haven't been able to like watch movies, have them cap, cap through my attention at all. Um, so that's part of it. And then again, I'm just, I love DC. And then seeing it, more. seeing it all come together. And then again, the way I like, I think with the exposition they gave, with the way they set up the final battle with Superman with um yeah like actually fleshing out some of the characters the action scenes like all around honestly for me i i think the pacing was good too which is hard to do in a four-hour movie but it felt like it, it can't like all right. nothing took too long nothing was too short oh. pardon your regularly scheduled podcast listening for this short ad break you've heard me talk about this before you can't still be getting ripped off by big wireless providers are you Well, if you've learned anything, you need to go to Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service just starting at 15 bucks a month. And that's where I thought there has to be a catch. But after speaking with them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. By cutting out retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that get passed down onto you in some form of mysterious fees. Mint Mobile just passes on sweet savings directly to you. For people just looking for extra savings, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. 
to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get a plan shipped directly to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash gg. That's mintmobile.com slash gg. Cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gg. Let me give you a scenario. Okay. Warner Brothers mm-hmm. is like, hey, Zach. We're sorry, dude. We really, we really, really messed up. I'm sorry. Okay. Give him the chocolates, the letter, handwritten, everything. We're sorry. Okay. Because I know there's a ton of uh, other stuff that happened with Zach and his personal life and all that while he was making Justice League and why he stopped, all that kind of stuff. Let's say they 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 fix that bridge and they mend it. And they go, We'll give you the Kevin Feige role. Do you think do you think he takes it? Do you think we could see that? Could that happen? I mean, I think they give him they I give think, him the Feige role and he builds it, you know, like he just finds the directors, he casts, you know, he just has that kind of puppet master, kind of what Kevin Feige seems to do. I think he would. I think that's what they need. First and foremost is to figure out what their tone is. Cause like Marvel has obviously found their tone pretty lighthearted, comedic, um, but at necessary times, like intense action. Yeah, can get that's pretty their tone can get pretty real pretty quick but for the most part like they have a lot of humorous moments and they crack jokes and stuff it's Disney. yeah, yeah it's, it's meant yeah. it's Disney. meant it's meant for it, the the intention is for you to come out feeling good except for except for infinity war which left well, you feeling soul crushed but that was the point too but that's the point you feel things when you come out of those movies and so if you look across most of the movies though they have they pretty much kept that like you like that's why i'm saying like a new marvel movie comes out at this point it's like Never heard of these people in the Marvel Universe, but sure, I'm going to go see it because well, I know yeah, what I'm going to go watch it. Yeah, I know what I'm getting myself into. So I think they need to nail that first and foremost with the, the yeah. DC movies. Like if like if a Green Lantern movie is coming out, people will just be like, yeah, sure, I'll go see the Green Lantern. And I'm not saying they have to replicate what Marvel's doing. In fact, I think what separates them a little bit is that they're a little darker. Um, but I there still, is an audience for that. And I still think it does need some... Like for me... Like the moment the Flash is in slow mo and see sees Superman going and he's just like whoa like that was funny to me like I don't need as much Marvel punchiness like haha moments for it to be like for yeah. it to just feel exhausting to me because like I know with some people they'll say like if it's just serious all the time I feel exhausted or drained yeah. like I honestly think Justice League had a pretty good tone they could keep something like that that's the first thing you gotta find out and then the second one is work on your universe and commit to it because doing two movies and then our Avengers movie like that doesn't work. Yeah, you need to have you're, you're going to have to Feige. it could be a gamble. But then again, not really because you sell merchandise cuz merchandise makes like a million times more. And then commit to it and be like, "Hey, here's our 10-year plan. We're going to actually let things brew, give it the right amount of time and set something up something our own." Um and I mean, like hearing Zack Snyder's vision, seeing how he set this up, do I agree with everything? No. But yeah, like sounding like what he had in plan, plan for this whole vision arc and stuff, that sounded cool. Well, and like with the Martian Manhunt at the end of the movie going like, well, now like I have something in stake too. It's like, okay, well, what what, what does he have in stake? Like I want to find out what, what his, like why he's fighting. And then by the end of it, they have everybody in the Justice League. Like... <laughs> They were just alluding to so yeah. much, like they were getting a new house, and then like they're like, "But more, like we can fit more here." Well, and then we talked about the Joker Batman scene, but as a whole, that came from the nightmare, which was the biggest illusion. Like, is that so? It seemed like that was another. What premonition is the nightmare? Order. Is that like an actual like comic or something? Like, or are you just saying nightmare from like? That's what they're calling the it. Okay. So, but like night, as in like K, they're calling it okay. like the Dark Knight, the nightmare. Uh huh. Because he had a nightmare in the first one, and that's when it was in, he was like in the desert, and it was bizarre, and it was super out of place. Um, so he had it again, but this time at the very end, and so it seems like he's essentially seen this is what the future is going to look like. And so at that point, you're like, what the fudge happened? Why is he teaming up with Deathstroke, Joker? Um, the, uh, the Johnny Atlantean Depp's woman. terrible ex-wife, whatever. And... Yeah. Um, Amber Heard, I believe. Yeah, and the other person. Instead of everyone else. And then, obviously... Uh, oh, yeah, she says Aquaman died. Like, yeah, well, he's uh, dead. At some point. Superman obviously shows up, and he's just gone berserk. And then doesn't he fly away with, like, Batman's head at the end or something? 
I Something like no, that. No, that was like uh Oh, that was that when they were Cyborg saw? Yeah, that's Cyborg what Cyborg saw. saw. Yeah, yeah. Um and Cyborg was like, no, like don't do that. And then he was like, go. But so like you have to think what in the world happened. And Joker saying it that has, it was Batman's yeah. fault. So I'm thinking it has to do something with Lois Lane. And so you're like, how in the world is this gonna unfold? And we'll probably never find out. So <laughs> Sag. Unlucky. All around go see it. I recommend it. I highly recommend it. If you have I, yeah, nothing if to do, you're a DC fanboy, you got You definitely got to go see it. Like it's if you, if you like DC, you're gonna love it. And well, maybe not love it, but you're definitely gonna yeah. have fanboy moments. But if you've seen the other DC movies and were disappointed, I don't think this one will this whew, disappoint like love. those other ones did. Yeah. Um. So at the very least, and it's a long movie. Yeah, he even separates it into parts, so just you could like watch an hour and a half at a time or whatever. But for me, that I started it and then I finished it. At no point yeah, was I, yeah, like checked out. So, yeah. So, long story short, um, Blue liked it. wasn't crazy about it. He had some parts that he obviously a lot of the core things that Justice League did wrong still did wrong to him, right? Am I yep, more or less yep. getting it right? Okay. Yep. Rob, solid. Um, cared a lot more about it. Would have liked to see where it went. Hated the aspect ratio though. Hey, and I, I can't stand that. It's just like I'm watching on a TikTok. But all in all, he liked it, and on the Rob scale, pretty high. Very high. And then for me, I don't know. One of the most fun. Here's the thing too: is one point in my life, I was like also wanting to become like a director myself, and I love movies, and I was like a critic, critic. And so when I would rate things, it'd be entirely different. And now it's like, did I have fun? Did I enjoy my time? <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed my time. That was one of the most. You had a good time. Yeah, it was one of the best movies I think I've seen in a, in a while, and so I'm gonna rate it like nine out of ten. I really enjoyed it. Does it have its problems? Yes, but I'm probably a little more lenient on my ratings too. So I liked it. We all liked it for the most part. And the internet. That's what Claire was saying. Was she was like, but I'm seeing everywhere, and like most of the mainstream media outlets are like bashing it. Which is so strange because then I go to Rotten Tomato and the aggregate score of critics is almost fresh. Mm-hmm. The audience almost 100% overwhelmingly liked it. So it's just so bizarre. It it still seems to be kind of polarizing. Um, and like like even Sonic and Dork were both kind of like, yeah, we didn't like it. Yeah. Um, like so Dork I'm almost interested to hear yeah, why, why, why they just didn't like it at all. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not saying they're wrong, um, no. but just from where I was coming from and knowing the DC universe where it was, I was more or less I was surprised. I left I left the movie more interested in the DC universe than going in. Hundred percent. Like when they said the DC universe was like canceled, whatever. I was sad because I like the heroes, but it wasn't like man, we're missing out on whatever we could have gotten. Yeah. Now, now after I'm that, really yeah, now I'm bummed. Like, oh, wait, I actually would have liked to see where this where this went. I would have liked to see them <laughs> recast Lex Luthor. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, Jesse Eisenberg was a weird choice. Still, well, um, I'll still stand by the I'll stand on the hill or die on the hill that it should have been Brian Cranston. I see, like, he could be the best Lex Luthor, I think. That would be really cool. Really, it's but practically I feel like Heisenberg, people, so. I feel like people would see bald you know brian cranston and just go heisenberg but but that's what i'm saying like we practically saw him in what i would like to see like luther portrayed as almost like a ruthless businessman kind of thing yeah Uh, but isn't lex luther supposed to be kind of buff though in the but i guess this version yeah well in this one he's like a young tech i don't know there's several different iterations yeah uh is there anything else we want to touch on before uh patreon questions uh, Have you guys seen Falcon and Winter Soldier? No. Oh, yeah. What premiered. the fuck? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen, seen it yet. It premiered today, though. Have you seen we'll it? We'll talk about it. I have seen it. Okay, well, we'll then talk just about it next week. Yeah, rough you impression. It? You enjoy it? You like it? Uh, like, I should watch it? it absolutely. Well, I All mean, right. I I, have feelings for Marvel characters. I can't. Like, they, Marvel just knows how to write good characters. Are you a Marvel man. or DC guy, Blue? I'm a whoever makes Poggers content, and okay. well, right now it's Marvel. hard. Right now it's hard not to be a Marvel fanboy, like with what they're doing. With Agreed. no one, no one, ha- no one's ever DC could, but like yeah. no one, like with what Marvel's accomplished, 
Yeah. And how they're bringing all the how they're bringing all these characters together and that how I, I honestly wasn't sold on these TV shows when I first heard about them. I mean, I was typed for WandaVision, but like uh, Marvel just gotten so good at writing characters that I'm just sold on everything they do now. Compared to the WandaVision pilot, how would you compare it? I think it was better than the WandaVision pilot, but that's only because WandaVision was, was meant to be like a very yeah, slow to... burn. Yeah. That makes sense. And this one has like four less. It wasn't WandaVision 10 episodes or eight? Nine episodes. Nine episodes. And then we get this Loki one's, right after this. This right? one's six episodes. Um, yeah, Loki's coming soon. Their whole timeline's messed up too. The way they wanted to release things. Like WandaVision was technically, I think we talked about this, technically supposed like to come out. in November. Like, yeah, right before the new Doctor Strange. Yeah. Um, but speaking of TV series, I also just uh, found, uh, I must have closed it. Or wait, yeah, um, a new headline. HBO is tripling down Ooh. on Game of Thrones with three more spinoffs. Why? Three more spinoffs. And I forgot Game of Thrones existed after Dude, that, that universe is so big though, and George R. R. Martin has gone so detailed well, they, into they it. They detailed that I... what these shows currently are playing to be. So the first working title is Ten Thousand Ships. Oh. Nope. <laughs> Ten Thousand Ships. It follows Princess Nymeria, an ancestor of House Martell and founder of the Kingdom of Dorne. It's set a millennium before the events of Game of Thrones, making an exploration of much older mythos than the Westeros timeline. That's cool. The second project is set in Flea Bottom, uh, obviously in King's Landing. And then the final project is being developed by Rome creator Bruno Heller with the work entitled Nine Voyages. The series would follow Lord Corliss Valerian, also known as the Sea Snake, Snake and the head of the House of Valerian. Interesting. So those are the three we have, all prequels. It's interesting. It's that must mean that they're whatever they're seeing of their other spinoffs. They're they gonna have like, an Avengers Game of Thrones moment. <laughs> <You imagine. laughs> but they it's not gonna mean shit. They've had at least that one or two other prequels though in production for a while. So it's making me think that they're whatever they're seeing, they're believing in, and they're like we're, we're tripling down. We're let's like let's go even deeper. That's what it seems like. And that gives me hope that, you know, whatever we're gonna get. Is fire because as we as we know, Game of Thrones can't be fuego. Um, yeah, and so honestly, I'm all more I'm all for more content in um, Game of Thrones. I kind of put like I wouldn't say high fantasy, but like it's like low fantasy. Mean that you will put high fantasy, dude. It's like there's wizards, there's people come from the dead. There's I still put like mid fantasy high, though. High fantasy no. though is like. You're thinking Actual, high fantasy like, like space, space no, sci-fi? No, I'm thinking like you've high got like, like spell casting shit. wizards everywhere yeah. and like what? a whole bunch yeah. more magic. You do! Not really. What, what, like what wizard is there? And like you've seen it at Karth when she shows like and there's like a warlock there. There's warlock well, they, temples. All I, you have to do is study that I would I would consider Game of Thrones high fantasy. See, it, I, I think it's, it's more high low fantasy. key high fantasy. Well, I mean, it's still high fantasy. It's just high fantasy with a little, like the you know, the magical aspect being a little <laughs> like, rare. With a like, I guess ten percent. I guess I should say I see high fantasy as having a lot more magic. Yeah, and so there, there's like magic working, but it's not stuff like you really see, like Jon Snow, obviously coming back, or like White Walkers, or the most we saw was is that season two or whatever, where she gives birth to that demon. I would say Whatever by the was. last two seasons, it's it's high oh, fantasy. Yeah. Just fucking kids out of there, like help! Yeah, I remember watching. I was like, <laughs> I was in a dorm, and I hadn't caught up on Game of Thrones. And this is when I first met Claire. There, like people were watching this, and I was like, "What have I missed?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I told him about like three episodes." I was like, what happened? That's funny. But yeah. So. Um, Patreon questions. Patreon questions. Or am I missing anything? Uh, I don't think there's anything. Oh, else. Evo getting oh. acquired by Sony. Oh, jeez. Is that bad or good? Bad. Fighting um, guys. Bad? For me, it it's could bad. Be, could be good, could be bad. I uh, rip Melee. That's never coming back well, yeah. now. Um, well, see, I, I looked this up so that I have something Ultimate? prepared. Nintendo has provided a statement regarding Sony's acquisition of the Evolution Championship Series. Nintendo has enjoyed engaging with fans at past Evo tournaments and wish the show organizers the best with their new venture. 
We will continue to assess EVO and other opportunities as we plan for future online and offline Super Smash Brothers tournament activity. AKA, just like usual, we're getting nothing. Later, losers. Yeah, so we're uh, Sony. No way we're getting an Evo anymore. Sony did say that they uh, had no problem having third party games. Yeah, but so, Nintendo's the problem. <laughs> yeah, but Nintendo's lives in the dark times. Yeah, they live in a different world, dude. They're like, we don't, they're probably just like, ah, we don't want to be associated with Sony. Yeah. Uh, so, best sad. case, we get some Smash Ultimate. Worst case, we don't get anything besides uh, titles that show up on the PS PS platform. Look, I'm going to say it, and it's going to sound stupid. Psst, 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 psst. But the thing I probably miss the most in quarantine is watching in-person Smash turns. Dude, <laughs> every, every It bums me out so much. That was my favorite weekends. thing to do in the weekend. Yeah. Yes. Just every watch weekends, a Smash tournament. It didn't matter what tournament The whole weekend, it was. yeah. Just Anything, watch dude. Matches. Like, any fighting game. Like, I... Mostly Smash, but like if Melee was on, I'd watch some Melee. If Ultimate Tourney, I'd get hype. And then if they were like, you don't watch online? No, no it's not the same. It would be it if we had online that people wanted to play. Then yeah, it would be fun to watch. But see, even though, even for me though, part of it too is like seeing players in person. Yeah, having the crowd like. It yeah. just feels Pop like, offs. yeah, it just has this like completely different feeling. Agree, agree. And it sounds so dumb, but yeah, I've missed that so much. Like, I, I would really take that too, back yeah. first and being able to go back to my gym. That's how much I same, miss it. Same, 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 same. <laughs> well, I'm glad you would give up my gym thing. <laughs> no, I'd give up, like, I would give up something. You, you uh, give up uh, Dr. Do do? Pepper? Fuck, what do I... I would give up Dr. Pepper. Uh, would you give up DoorDash? For having melee back or you having get, you okay, it. never mind. You I won't give Doctor. Pe- <laughs> I won't. I won't give up Doctor Pepper. I would give up DoorDash if there I could get go. some some tournaments every couple weekends. Thank you for your hey, sacrifice, Mister Fruit. I I was tested this week with uh, DoorDash and stuff. You didn't reinstall. I did not. I drove every fucking place when we wanted That's food. Right. I drove. That's right. That's why yesterday Blue was like, "I need your info," and I was like, "I'm driving from Chipotle right now. Give me a little bit." Good for you. Yep. I um, still not downloaded. So, okay, yeah, I'm I, clean. I, I, yep, deleted. Uh, Z Dog week <laughs> has a question. Says for Rob, Kingdom Hearts was my favorite series for a lot of my life, but I only got through a few hours of three before losing motivation to quit due oh to boy. its flaws and non-challenging gameplay and the singing and dancing crap. That's <laughs> the only time I, I see Rob's game. eye twitching. Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> uh, do you 3? think it's so worth funny. giving it another go? Did you ever go back and finish it? Uh, no, I never get, went back. Still so heard, funny. How every time I tuned in to Rob playing that game, it was some stupid just fucking mini square game. dancing. He's skateboarding or snowboarding with something. He's like doing Pilates uh, in robots space from or a something. Robot thing. Yeah, yeah was, I was just like, <laughs> I was like, I swear it's not like this. Yeah, every time I, he's I like, dude, I swear. Like, and the third time he's like, I bro, I swear, okay. And then like the fourth time, I was like, okay, it's just this. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've heard it's better. I haven't gone back and probably won't go back. I, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe one of these days when I'm bored, I'll go back. I have no desire, though. Um, in Pasta of Haiku, um, asks, for the boys, if you took the trip to Hawaii, if you got to go swimming with the sea life between sea turtles, dolphins, seals, or cage diving with sharks, which would you pick and why? Uh, absolutely not cage diving with sharks. Yeah. Me yeah. Uh, also I'm- not dolphins. Dolphins. What? Are- Dolphins will fuck you, dude. Nah, I like dolphins. Whatever. I would, play, I would take the dolphins. Whatever's not deep water. Thanks. Yeah, I agree. I seals would be have, tight. I hundred percent blasphemy. There's no way I could do that. Yeah, I, I want to chill with seals. I would not chill with dolphins. Dolphins will literally bone you. Dolphins are more dangerous than sharks. I'm pretty sure. They're messed up, dude. Yeah, the, some of the dolphins stuff they are do to each other. Is up to you. Because they're so smart and they're bored, dude. They're like, what do we do in this water? If only we had posable thumbs. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. If dolphins had opposable thumbs, we'd be done. The world. Humanity yeah. would be Roots. over. Uh, uh, Shark Boy. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to go into a stupid thing where they tangent, tangent about, about yeah, dolphins. Yeah, where they, where they land ashore. All right, they, Shark Boy uh, uh, <laughs> asks, uh, if you had to drink a gallon of something other than water a day, what would you choose? Water. Uh, anything other than Kool-Aid. water? I don't even know if I could do that. I feel like that would just be like a huge health hazard. Kool Aid, because it's like just sugar water. <laughs> like, and imagine like I still a gallon get it of my water. Oh, 
I love soda, but a gallon of soda a day, I would throw At that up. point, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like it's carbonated throughout the day. Like at some point, it would be flat. I, I'm like, going to assume this is like, like if you don't do this, you'll die. So uh, I'm going to say, give me whatever zero calories so I can actually get through it in a day. Oh, like, there's no way water easy. Yeah, there's no way you're getting through a gallon of soda. Oh, but does that count as water? Shit. Yeah, I would, I, I would pick like propel flavored water. water. Oh. You know, like there's like a propel that's like a really kind of substitute of water. It's like 20 calories or something. I'd probably pick that. They're tasty. <sighs> oh, that's a good question. There's no drink I like enough to drink a gallon a day of aside from water. That's a yeah, lot. I. Uh, that's a lot. I, I don't want my stomach to hate me. I don't know if there's anything might, I would. I, might as well drink this much soda a day, dude. Okay? Think about that. Uh, I'd be impressed. Like, I look at that. That's a lot of water. I, <laughs> I love no, I, I, I love other drinks besides water as like a little little treat for myself. You know? Little, but nothing little, like that. Little Dr. Pepper. Like, I, I did good today. I'm going to keep myself a little Dr. <laughs> Pepper. But not, I'm going to chug oh, this oh, gallon oh. of Dr. Pepper today. I don't know, dude. I, I don't really have an answer. If I had to choose, it'd be like fucking like Gatorade or something that actually let's assume did something for me. Let's assume whatever you're drinking, you like it and you don't have to worry about health hazards. Dr. Pepper. Yeah, I'd say like Coke. Sure. Yeah, Dr. Pepper. If, that was if I don't have to worry about all the logistics, then. Yeah. <laughs> that. Um, Mommy asks, hi, Blue. Uh, hi, Evangelion Mom. final movie is coming out. Oh. Any intention of watching it? It's a four-part movie. Absolutely. Also, between the TV series and the movie remake, which one do you like the most? It's rumored that the TV series got its funding cut from sponsors due to a disagreement. So the TV series really wasn't what it was envisioned. This movie is. Uh, I'm definitely more excited for the movie than anything. Um, I don't pay too much attention to like the news stories by High and Evangelion, but um, uh. Whatever comes out, I'm going to watch. And everyone should watch this series because it's actually really, really good and uh, has a lot of really uh, important uh, commentary on not just the human condition, but society. Okay. Um, Tally asks, all right, boys, drive yourselves in because this is going to be a long one. So I was inspired by the question from last week of which superpower do you wish you had? And it got me thinking. While in theory, invisibility and teleportation are nice, they don't work as well in a practical sense. So because of this, I ask, what are your thoughts on the power to manipulate probability? Essentially, let's say Blue wanted to end capitalism. What is, what <laughs> is the chance that capitalism would be gone by tomorrow? Zero percent? Let's make it 100 percent. I'm just curious on your thoughts of the viability of the concept. See, that's just cheating, though. Way too then, Yeah, that's way too What's the probability that the human race is erased tomorrow? Hundred percent. What's now. the pro what's the probability that I win the lottery tomorrow and then every other lottery? Oops. What's now the I'm probability rich? that GME is going to moon? Two hundred percent. Yeah. Oh go my back. god, dude. That's yeah. That's <laughs> way too overpowered. That's like at that point you're just like at that point you're going into real life with creative mode. Like you're well, because like like what what are the well, what are the limits? Though? Let's say Superman's coming at me. I'm like, what are the probability that Superman's going to hit me? Hundred percent. Zero percent. You know, like. Everything's really a probability, pretty much, if you think about it. What are the odds I'm going to die? What's the probability I'm going to die? Zero percent, hundred percent. I feel like that probably most OP thing because you can literally just affect everything. That's a good superpower. It's like that in Deadpool. She's like, I'm just lucky. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but at least she can't like control it and control. Manipulate them. Yeah, manipulate right. other things. Yeah, um, that's a good like superpower like, a, i guess in the sense of being broken if that's what you're going for um, it would have to be punk. like a monkey's paw like yeah but it's only things you could touch or only one probability or okay. <laughs> or maybe you can only affect probability by x percent so like one percent change or something like that yeah um, if the dream team was in uh the friday the 13th series uh who would most likely to survive and who wouldn't uh, Mr. Fruit would survive because anything he just run. Mr. Uh, Fruit would survive because he would like immediately drive off no, in the nearest car. I gotta be honest with you all. I'm kind of more of a fight than flight. So if you saw Jason Voorhees coming at you with a machete, you're I straight up him? think I'm dying. Yeah, because I'm like, 
Oh, see, I'm flight. See you, dude. I know I'm fast. Yeah, I'm flight. See you. I'm, I'm like square room. up, Jason. Oh, and then I'm dead. Thanks, Mr. Fruit. Well, never mind. Okay, <laughs> I vote me and Rob. Because, yeah, like, me. like you know, like when you like t when you're a little kid, and you'd like turn the lights off and run away. Yeah. You know, right? Or like you trying to go to the stairs real quick. I would do that and just clinch my fist, but like, try me. I'd be like scared, but I'm like, come at me, ghost. You see, oh, throw hands, baby. You see, I used to be that way, but like as I got older, I was just like, whatever. If they kill me, then fucking do it, dude. Fucking There's no it. fight or do fight. It. It's just I'm just like, do it, it right now, dude. Just fucking end it. Then if, if you're, you're gonna, gonna fucking do it, do it, dude. Do it, Jason. If you're gonna do it, do it. Come on. But if, but in the in the event that I know I can, like, I see him and I have the opportunity, like, yeah, I'm gonna run away. Yeah, me too. I think I'm first to die. I'm gonna be honest. Um, to Piv asks, uh, someone found out that Daddy Pig from Papega Pig or Peppa Pig is Papega 14 Pig. feet, <laughs> is 14 feet, two feet, two inches tall. What For reference, Snorlax is 6'11". Do you think Daddy Pig would be able to beat Snorlax in a fight and what Pokemon would be able to take him down? I think Palkia is the only one I would be able to imagine would take down Daddy Pig. No, it's fucking How big is Snorlax. Palkia? Snorlax would just hyper beam that dude. That's easy. But yeah, what is Peppa Palkia Pig is gonna like do? Fourteen feet. Peppa, Peppa, Peppa the pig's dad is gonna be like, "Hey, let me teach you a life lesson." Snorlax gonna be like, "I can't hear him." Yeah, I, well, I don't know but. what his profession is. You know, I don't know what Peppa <laughs> Dad does for a living. <laughs> you don't know. He could be a badass. Um, personally, I'd probably bring like um, I'm a champ with a low sweep, and yeah, he's done. But he's 14 it, feet, yo. Yeah, Machamp but his extra like weight, feet. it's going to do more damage, dude. That's what low sweep does. I'm Easy. bringing Paul. I don't know how big Paul is. He looks huge. Uh, I'm going to bring Arceus. Ha. I was going to say that. That's <laughs> yeah. cheating. I'll just bring the god of Pokemon, why not? Or ditto. And then we can have a face-off. Oh. oh. Peppa the Pig Dad versus Peppa the Pig Dad ditto. Match. Yeah. I would flex on him. I would flex on him, and I would bring a shiny ditto. Oh, shiny. Oh, so shiny yeah, I Peppa wonder what, the Pig Dad. I wonder what shiny yeah. Peppa the Pig Dad looks like. Now That's an extra the, layer. There's layers to Whoa. this shit. Yeah. Um, Papa Dadums asks, what other franchise do you think would be good to be Schneidered? I personally would be <laughs> up for a super dark, depressing Pokemon four-hour epic. No. No, there's like nothing I don't think could benefit mm. from a four-hour movie. There's not many things. Game of Maybe Halo, and I just say that because I'm a big Halo fanboy. I say, I'll say like Halo, Game of Thrones, or Assassin's Creed. Game of Thrones should get Snyder cutted with the Snyder cut with George R. R. Martin's cut. Yeah, give George R. R. Martin get enough money to remake the last two seasons. Yes, That'd please. That's the Snyder cut I want. That would the, suck, the like, Martin it, cut. It would frame into the chair and they'd be like this chair is so nice <laughs> so, like, like i don't want to know about There's the chair just a narrator george. sitting there and they approach the room it's like george visually i can see i don't i don't yeah. need you to i don't need you to tell me what's in the room george i see it he's like oh sorry um um z train asks what do you think about the announcement of the my hero collectible card game um i, I saw it. i saw somebody mention i forgot to like look into it I saw it. Um, I didn't see what any of the shinies or <laughs> yeah. What are the super rares like? <laughs> yeah, like I just want to know what the super rares look like. And actually, if if I had Christian nearby and he had the card game, I would actually learn the how to play. When uh, I don't because I, I don't know what the mechanics are. If it's actually a collectible, like oh, this is all might, and he does this attack, or if it's like just collecting. I'm trying to collectible card game i'm trying to see if i can like i don't know if i can find a picture of the card like i don't go to dicebreaker.com slash game slash my hero it's in the q a if you just scroll down like he linked it in the q a thing let me see let's we'll see what we're working with here competitors will bring a customized 51 card deck designed around specific heroes such as the always smiling all might Protagonist, Izuki Midoriya, or his friend and rival, Katsuki Bakugo. Um, hey, it looks cool. I, I I don't know if I'll play it, but, I mean, maybe I'll buy some packs. Yeah, like, I still haven't seen a card, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes, just... Yeah, just I would love to see what the looks. card art would look like. Yeah, yeah can... that is probably really important, but maybe I'll buy some packs and fuck around. Buy some first editions and never open them. Looks cool, I guess. I'm I don't know. I like card games. Yeah. Card games are tight. I just have no one to play them with. 
Um, Free Will asks, if you could banish one Pokemon from Gen 8, which would it be? Gen 8. I don't know Gen 8. I don't know if I want a Gen... Can someone give me a Gen 8 Pokemon so I can have a reference? Um, It's the newest one, Sword and Shield. Yeah. Oh, I put one in the Discord just now, or uh, in the DMs, that I don't understand. Uh, Flapple? I don't like Flapple. What a Flapple? It's an apple. Yeah, no, it's a no, it's fucking a joke. apple dragon. Yeah, he's dragon type because he's a worm. He's an like a worm in an apple, yeah. but W Y R M. It's so hilarious. it's a pun. No, yeah, it's great. Oh, I know who I'd banish. I'd banish no Sobble's final Evo, and hopefully yep. we get a different one. Yup, get Intellion at it. Listen, Cinderace has grown on me. Intellion still has not. Yeah, Cinderace. Intellion still is not. Is pretty okay. Grookey. Grookey's still goaded. Um, oh, yeah, Grookey's. Intellion's still trash. I'm sorry. Yeah, like Rillaboom, down for it. Honestly, looking at Are the you list. guys talking about the really, like, tall, skinny, yeah. like. Like, honestly, looking at 8th gen, for the most part, I think they did a really good job with this gen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, maybe, like, see, I don't really have anything wrong with it, but I guess Milseri or Al Creamy is just kind of weird, but. I don't really have a problem with their design. Among Us, just so Shark wouldn't stop oh, referencing Us. that he <laughs> loves that fucking card. That's fifth gen, though. No Among Us. Yeah, like, I'm looking, aside from that, honestly, I really like, maybe, I don't know, Ice Cube's kind of cursed. I know Blue's going to be like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, with that, I'm going to, Ice Cube, the melted thing. That's cursed. With the big ice block, sick. But when he's I got the Ice little Cube. with like the wispy, I love Ice Cube. That one's kind of cursed. Yeah, well, you're cursed. Fair enough. Oh, like the when he has a little oval head. Yeah, like big ice block. That's why does cool. it have a penguin body? Well, it is a penguin. It's but it just has an ice block. <laughs> just a common a, head. And, yeah, and then with the melts. ice block, it's cool. Yeah, but then with the no, it's weird. Uh, last question here from Derps asks, I just ordered a new gaming PC and haven't, and haven't had one in about 10 years. Any suggestions on games I must try? Side note, I have kids and sadly do not have the time to sink in into Final Fantasy. <laughs> Let me just stop. Uh, <laughs> with having kids. Yeah, but it's like, alright, I'm out. <laughs> I got enough for you. Destiny 2. <laughs> no joke. If I'm thinking like, I have kids and I don't have a ton of time to put into gaming. Mm-hmm. What do I want to play? I would have to think of just games I play, which aren't very good for casual. Uh, Valheim is if you like sandbox, you can just chip away at that. You know, play around in Viking World. Tim Tim, if you like monster collecting, Loop See, Hero like a, is like a fun I, like do one loop kind of thing. I'm thinking like like Slay the Spire, but that's not, like but you See, play that on anything. Well, like, I would say you know, well, that's true. Yeah. Because, like, what is a game that is, like, a must-play if you only have a PC? Yeah. But it's also... But then, like, my my suggestions for that are, like, VR games. But, like, you have to have a VR headset, too, for those. Because that's where I only feel like you can't... That's where you get the PC gaming experience is, like, with VR and stuff like that. I would with... say try MOBAs, but um, games last yeah. a while. And on top of that, it takes a while to learn. CSGO I would recommend, but then again, like I've sunk seven hundred hours into CSGO and I blow. Like <laughs> that is a great question for our viewers to help you with because we clearly cannot. Sorry. And that'll uh that's the last question. And so oh. I believe that'll do it for the podcast today. We'll do it for episode seventy seven. Thank you guys for listening uh to episode seventy seven. Shout out uh, to Zach Snyder find- for the director's yeah. cut. Where can people find you on the internet, Blue? You guys can find me everywhere at Omrecker. You guys can find me everywhere at Please Watch This Zack Snyder Movie and tweet that we want this to keep happening and keep it alive. And you can find me everywhere at uh, Spam Twitch telling them to get me in contact with somebody because they keep dodging me. Dodging? Yeah. I kind of told you about that. Yeah. Don't actually, though. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to send people over. <laughs> but... That's this episode. Right. Thank you guys for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Also, apologies on the mix-up with the last episode. Yeah, just there was mad stuff. Stuff going on in the background. Don't worry about it. Uh, we'll see you then. Bye.